Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at an uninterruptible power supply for gamers. Yes, apparently that's a thing. Uh, this is the APC Gaming UPS. And like other UPSs, this is designed to give your computer enough power during a power outage so that you can safely shut it down or bridge the time that it takes to get a backup generator up and running. Uh, this will not provide hours of power. It's going to give you minutes but that's often enough time to be able to safely shut your computer down versus just having the power abruptly cut out. And we're going to be taking a look at this one today and trying to figure out whether or not there is a need for a gaming UPS in this marketplace. And before we do, though, I want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see whether or not you need a gaming UPS. Now, the price point on this is $259. Because this has a gaming label on it, it does carry a premium price, anything with gaming does. And the reality is you can get pretty much the same device here for less money if you don't choose the gaming one. But this is not as expensive based on its features as it might appear at face value. So this one has a 1500 VA power capacity, about 900 watts can be uh, passed through it. And what makes this more expensive is the fact that it has a pure sine wave output when it's on battery. I grabbed this image from the APC website. So the image you see there on the right is an example of what the power from the street comes into your house like, a nice even wave here. And then a lot of the less expensive UPS devices have a simulated sine wave that looks a little more abrupt, as you can see on the left there. And a lot of sensitive devices, including some expensive gaming computers and power supplies, really prefer to get that true sine wave. And in many cases, a cheaper UPS might damage your computer or it might not provide backup power when the lights go out. So if you have something like this, you'll be assured that you're getting a much cleaner amount of power delivered to your computer when you do lose power. But the pure sine wave devices like this one do cost a lot more money. So you can often find the same capacity for half the price of this, but it doesn't have that pure sine wave that this one and many others like it have. That said, because this has the gaming label, it does cost more. And let's take a look at what this one has that the non-gaming one does not. So like any good gaming device, you've got RGB lights on it. You've got one here on the front, which indicates the strength of the battery. And then on the back, you have a light that can be configured in a couple of different colors. It's pretty bright, as you can see here. In fact, it's blowing out my camera uh, as I shift through it. But it does have a couple of different colors you can choose from. And it provides some illumination to the back of the unit so you can get everything plugged in in the dark, I guess. You can also turn it off because it is very, very bright by holding down the button here on the top. Now on the front, it does have three USB ports that you can use to charge tablets and other mobile devices, but it only provides a maximum of 15 watts out of those USB ports. And if you've got three things plugged into the USB ports here on the front, uh, it's only going to provide five watts to each device. Basically, it's going to act as a small phone charger and not one of those faster USB-C uh, power delivery devices, even though it has a USB-C port here on the front. So I was thinking that something beefy like this at the price that it costs would have a little bit more output out of those USB ports, but nope, it's only 15 watts total or five watts a piece there. Now on the back, uh, again, the only difference here versus the non-gaming version of this UPS is the light. Everything else is pretty much on the other one that costs a bit less. So you've got a total of six ports here that will operate on the battery when the power is cut to the unit. You've got a bunch over here on this side and then one more on this side. And then it's got a bunch of uh, plugs here that are just surge protected but not battery backed up. So if your lights go out, only this row here and this one here on this side will get the battery back up. These here will not have any power when power from the street is cut. You also have some coax inputs here, so you could plug in your cable TV on one end and output the other this way. That'll give you some lightning protection. 
Uh, they also have a network jack here as well for Ethernet, but it's only rated at gigabit, not beyond that. So if you are doing a multi-gigabit network like I am, you're probably not going to want to use these ports because it's not rated for anything faster than gigabit. Over here, you've got a port right over there uh, for connecting to your computer. And they do have software that you can download that will safely shut down your PC when the UPS switches to its internal battery. And that's something that is exactly the same as their non-gaming version here. In fact, I was expecting some kind of fancy gaming software to configure this thing, but nope, it's just the basic APC PowerShoot software that you install that will safely shut down your computer when the power goes out. Now the connector that links up to your computer here looks like an ethernet jack, but it's actually a special cable that APC has been packing into their UPSs for years now uh, that terminates to USB. So it has to be plugged into a USB port on your computer. And when it loses power, it will send the signal over to the computer, but the software has to be running for it to know to shut the computer down. So just be ready for that if you plan to use this feature and don't lose the cable because you'll have to buy another one if it gets lost. It's not a standard cable. Now there were some reviews on Amazon indicating that this unit has some issues with electronics burning out and smoking. Uh, I did not experience any of the things that many of these Amazon buyers did experience. I will of course update this review if I have trouble with it down the road. They did release a firmware update for it in January of 2021 that I think addressed these very problems. But again, I will keep you updated if we have any issues with the unit we got in for review. Now, like most UPSs, this has lead acid batteries inside, two of them. They're very easy to replace, very easy to find. So when the time comes, you should be able to get that done without too many issues. You do have to connect that red wire up to the battery on the left when you first get going with it. I found that the unit we got had those batteries fully charged, so very easy to get going and very easy to replace when the time comes. You'll know when that time comes because this thing will start beeping at you incessantly, even when the power is on. And when you hear that beep, you got to move pretty quick to get those batteries swapped out because it means the unit probably won't be able to provide backup power should you have an outage. So just be prepared for that. That beep will come eventually. Now on the top of the unit, you have a display that indicates how much time is left on the battery along with some other useful information. This is the same display you'll get on other UPSs from APC and others. The only difference here is that it is a little bit larger and it's angled a little bit differently, but beyond that, it's the same thing. They do have a light here that indicates the health of the battery, so that's one unique feature of the gaming device, but I think you could get that information from the battery indicator and the load indicator here on screen. Now to give you an idea of battery life you can expect, right now I have an Xbox One X attached along with a 4K monitor. Both of those are plugged into the battery ports, and it's estimating that I'll have 34 minutes of useful gameplay before I kill the battery and it'll take about 14 hours to charge that battery back up after that 34 minute period is over. You can also see that we're using about 144 watts right now and there's a few other pieces of information you can get here as well and it'll give you an idea as to what you can expect and how many events it's experienced uh, since it was last reset. But that's pretty much it and you can see just how little battery life you get on an Xbox Imagine if you've got a big gaming PC that's consuming five or 600 watts to play the game that you're playing. You're gonna have a few minutes maybe to get that thing shut down safely. Now at my house, I have a backup generator with an automatic transfer switch. So when my power goes out, I'm usually out for 30 to 45 seconds before the generator kicks on. And so a device like this is perfect even with a bigger machine because it'll at least keep it going for five or 10 minutes and that's long enough to bridge the gap until the generator starts supplying power again. And I've put UPSs on all of my critical electronics around the house as a precaution and it'll keep everything running when the power goes down. Let's do a real world test now. We're gonna put the monitor on the desk here and see if the Xbox will still work after I cut power to the unit. All right, so we've got the Xbox running off camera right now. We have the 4K monitor and the Xbox connected to the UPS. And I have a smart plug configured so I can just hit a button here on my phone and kill power uh, to the unit here. So let's do that. So now the power is off. It just clicked on and soon a cooling fan will turn on here. 
and this will beep at me every so often to let me know that it's running on the battery. Uh, the display, as you can see, just went dark, and that's probably an effort to preserve the battery life, but you can uh, scroll through here to see where things are at. And it looks like we'll, we can run for probably about 20 or 30 minutes with the Xbox here before the battery is completely depleted, and you can get that battery indicator. There's the beep. You can turn off the beep if you hold down the speaker icon here. And if you're just using this to run a router or something like that, you could probably get a good half hour to 45 minutes, if not longer, for low power consuming devices. But as you can see, no interruption at all. I can hit the button here and that will uh, restore power to the unit and it clicks over very quickly. I can hit it again here like we're having a bad storm and it's back on battery no problem. So pretty flexible here. It works like any UPS should, although again, you do get the sine wave here, the pure sine wave that some of the cheaper devices don't have. The big question though is, do you need a gaming device? Well, I guess if the lights are not important to you, you can save yourself some money by getting a similar pure sine wave unit without the gaming label on it. And as with many things, gaming means RGB lights and a more expensive product with a higher margin for the manufacturer. And in this case, you can get pretty much the same product, maybe a little less attractive, that will do the same thing with the same features and save you some money in the process. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Steven Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.